Design has always been a part of my life. I am Wayne Smith. Welcome to my world. Appreciation. Modupe. Onibuore. Babagbo. Pemi. Oh, there was a session where we did the Junior Academy Basics okay. in terms of headpieces and colors and a template for a mask. Okay. But then all of these little basics that are used for Junior Academy, they then evolve into the costumes that were presented in A Mask in the Masquerade and Island in the Sun. Mm -hmm. So the basic mask then became a more elaborate face piece that the um, island people wore. Okay. So everything just Fell into evolved place. from from the very basics into the elaborate piece that you would see in terms of the backpack that Daughter of the Moon would wear, um, all those different little pieces. Okay. Yes. So what are some of the areas that your tutorial would touch on for persons who are interested in the process of masquerade design from concept to execution? What, what are the pointers that they will take away from this series? Oh, the, the simplicity of it, you know, the fact that you can take some tape and wire and create wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's not, you don't necessarily need to, there's not a need for heavy welding and stuff like that. I create grand stuff using basic techniques. The, the old traditional techniques in terms nice. of wire bending, but taking it to another level. Mm -hmm. um, the use of card like they were using in the Bahamas, John Canoe and those types of things. But again, you don't have to, it doesn't have to stay in its raw form. You can create stuff to look like metal plates or whatever, like I did with the steel donkey. But the basics, you know, the bending of PVC tubes to, to create whatever shapes you want in terms of the neck of the steel donkeys, the use, use of things like nails to create the mane, you know, very innovative things mm -hmm. that you can use to, to create just the things around you. The, the banana, ban, banana shag for shaggy bear, okay. all those Take, things. Taking yeah. it back a bit oh, yeah. closer to yeah. its origin. Oh yes. Okay, yes. but also using color. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. We're going to create the foundation for a cardboard mask. This template offers the possibility of embellishment with papier mache extensions there there's a whole range of things that you can do with this foundation we start with two circles starting at the same point the first two and three quarter inches radius and the other six inches which would leave us three and one quarter inches for the actual width of the the mass. So we have our circle. The challenge is that it is a flat surface and we would want to create a little bit of depth and dimension. So we slip the, the circle and we're going to gently overlap, overlap until we get the desired curvature. You're going to mark those points. Go ahead and remove the excess. Julius. We're going to need a piece of card that will cover our space. This gives, gives us an idea where our adhesive will, will go.
So Kevin has been a part of the NCF training program and I've been designing for Junior Kuduma for several years. I would want to start today with some of the cornerstones of Junior Kuduma and that would be like a, a basic headpiece and the neck piece if you want to call it that or the yoke or the collar. These are the things that form the foundation of most of the Kiddies Kuduma costumes. We like to th keep things low cost, so we're going to be basically using a lot of cord, and this could be recycled stuff, old, old curb, wood boxes, whatever, and some glue. For our basic headpiece, we're going to need two strips, an inch and a half wide. One of those strips will be 16 and a half inches, and the other 12 and a half. To make a mark inside of both edges, and then we're going to come inside of that mark the same way. So we've done that on the strip that's 16 and a half inches. That shows where our headband or crown band will go. So we have the headband and the crown band and I'm going to get Kevin to assemble it. I put a strap across the back just to keep it stable. Then, laying it flat, I trace our basic shape, marking our end points. Mark the center of the the stand and the center of the the crown band. This will act as a guide as we assemble, move forward in assembling the pieces. So just give yourself a little bit of glue there. So there you have it. The basic. What we did, we would have stabilized the center using hot glue. Once that is in place, it made it easier to go through the whole band back and front for maximum stability. Moving on to the collar slash neck piece slash yoke. I like my collar to fit flat um, around the body. So for this, I start by using the outline of a basic Charles t-shirt. I've disassembled the t-shirt and fold the pieces in half. Around the neckline, I've joined the t-shirts at the shoulder and I continue down the back of the t-shirt, up the side, and around the armhole. So from my neckline, I mark about a quarter inch all the way around. I will mark my four and a half inches all the way all the way around. The paper I used at the back, I had folded because this is our center front and we would want to have a full collar. So I would have folded the paper and aligned it before I did my, my tracing. So this is our basic child's collar for a small child. And 
based on the shape of our front collar and our back of the collar, we create the design line for our sash as one piece of fabric. So there's no seam at the side. We also extend the sash half an inch above the front and the back for gluing purposes. Our next step is to trace our, our sash. The width of the sash and how far it reaches is it's basically up to the designer, depends on the aesthetic. We've traced and we've cut our piece and we've marked the front and the back. We also need to mark on our collar the point at which our sash will connect. It bites you when it comes down to competition because sometimes a judge only have a couple of seconds to adjudicate and the obvious may register with them, no, readily, you, you know, but with a theatrical production, you can see it a couple of times, you can watch the video again and it will finally hit you with, you know what, that is what he meant. And then you realize that the designer has gone beyond. <laughs> And I, I want to see a little bit more of that happening, going beyond the obvious. But as I said, sometimes competition doesn't lend itself to to that. So there must be more for where you can actually take it beyond. Dream, yes. dream beyond. Yes. That this perfectly demonstrates the fact that Masquerade really is a theater of the streets. Oh yes, definitely. And can be adapted, whether for stage or for outdoors. Definitely. And it was very important to me to, to explore new avenues. I always remember one of the greatest lessons I learned from Robert was the was taking it to the, the next level. His first, my first task with him, he tasked me with a brainstorming exercise and, you know, he gave me a theme and said, well, you know, for the next two minutes, write everything that comes to mind when you think about this theme. And I thought it was so easy and I was going to have so much to work with. And I'm writing and I'm writing and I'm writing because so much came to mind when he gave me the theme. Okay. Then he took the piece of paper and he said, okay now, I want you to design the costume, but not drawing on anything that you've written on this piece of paper. So, so I learned to early to go, to go um, beyond the yeah. obvious. So now that whenever I design a costume, I do start with the obvious. Yeah. I start with the obvious knowing that that is not where it's going to end. Yeah. I start with that and then it will evolve or it will discard that as I as it as I start to work on it it will move to where it needs to be and usually it is not it will never be where I started simple as it was one of the greatest lessons I've I've learned <laughs>